So, um, now we we did a segment a while back. Oxford um, Union did a debate. Or one of the guys, I forget which one, from uh, trigonometry. Um, he had this monologue that I agreed with, partly informed by Michael Moore's Planet of the Humans, that what they're telling you with wind turbines and solar, that that's not actually going to fix this. And he basically made the argument, you're not getting people in countries that are just industrializing, like India, like China, or or even in advanced stages of industrialization, but not like the West that haven't gotten to achieve that level of material prosperity. You're not getting them to give up on energy production. They're just not going to do it. And he put it in a very clear and human way. He said, if you tell a parent that in order to give your child prosperity and health, you're going to have to keep pushing a button. And every time you do, it's going to release carbon dioxide. Every parent is going to push that button. So you're not going to convince people to scale back on energy production in poor countries um, at a level that you would need to. So you're going to have to focus your energy on inventing your way out of it. Now, I agree with that. You might not like it. You might think it shouldn't require that. But, I mean, if wishes were fishes, we'd all be casting nets. I just think that's the reality. Unless we come up with breakthrough technologies, we're not solving this. So that's why I found this interesting. Um, this sounds like you know, it's going in the right direction. I've always thought carbon capture was the only way we would do it. Uh, the Lego-like way to get CO2 out of the atmosphere. For decades, scientists have tried to figure out ways to reverse climate change by pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and storing it underground. They've tried using trees, giant machines that suck CO2 out of the sky, and complicated ocean methods that involve growing and burying huge quantities of kelp. Companies, researchers, and the U.S. government have spent billions of dollars on the research and development of these approaches, and yes, they, yet they remain too expensive to make a substantial dent in carbon emissions. Now a startup says it has discovered a deceptively simple way to take CO2 from the atmosphere and store it for thousands of years. It involves making bricks out of smushed pieces of plants, and it could be a game changer for the growing industry working to pull carbon from the air. Graphite, a new company incubated by Bill Gates. I know, I know, I know. Bill oh, Gates' great. investment group. I mean, if there's one thing we know about Bill Gates, it's that every product he's ever been involved with works exactly as advertised. Exactly as advertised uh, ab every single time. Absolutely. And, you know, it, with this, you get a free vaccine. Well, yeah, well, and it's not with just, that, I mean, the vaccine brick, is the obvious one. Vaccine. Yeah. That's the obvious one. But what about like Windows Vista? Everybody remember that one? That oh, yeah. worked like a charm. Oh, yeah. Everybody oh, yeah. remember Windows Me? Even Windows 98, right? Has anybody ever saved a file on their Windows operating system and had it just, you know, unfindable because it was buried in the bowels of the hard drive in some random oh, yeah, folder yeah, that yeah. you never knew oh, existed? Yeah. Because yeah. that's never happened to me that I know of. I don't know of anybody who knows that. So the fact that Bill well, Gates' name well, is but, on this makes well, me very but no, confident. If he, if he can apply that to this technology, that'll be perfect. You <laughs> take the carbon and you bury it somewhere and people forget about it and you yeah, can right. never find exactly. it again. Exactly. So maybe, yeah. he's gonna, maybe, maybe they'll call this company Vista. Yeah, Vista. <laughs> uh, Breakthrough Energy Ventures announced Monday that it had created a method for turning uh, bits of wood chips and rice hulls into low-cost dehydrated chunks of plant matter. Those blocks of carbon-laden plant matter, which look a bit like a shoebox-sized shoebox -sized Lego blocks, can then be buried deep underground for hundreds of years. The approach the company claims could store CO2 for around $100 a ton, a number long considered a milestone for affordably removing carbon dioxide from the air. Quote, we've bet the future of our planet on our ability to remove CO2 from the air said Chris Rivest, a partner at Breakthrough Energy Ventures. Pretty much every IPCC scenario that has a livable planet involves us pulling like 10, 5 to 10 gigatons of CO2 out of the air by mid to late century. Uh, 5 to 10 gigatons of CO2 a year is... Uh, what did I do? Is about... What does that say? I can't see that. 
five to ten bigger comes uh, is around two. twelve to twenty five percent of what humanity yeah. currently emits every year. Um, all right, we don't need the rest of that. Um, so basically, what they're saying is because plant matter stores carbon, but then it releases it when it breaks down. What they're doing is taking the plant matter dehydrating it so that it doesn't break down and doesn't decay and then burying it with the carbon. Um, you know, the rest of the article basically gets into, it's a solution that's so cheap and simple that nobody seems to have ever tried it. Um, I think solutions like that, not necessarily that and not necessarily involving Bill Gates, that's the only way you're actually solving climate change. I mean, the, this whole thing where you sort your plastics it's total bullshit. It's a total placebo. Diff different plastics have a different chemical composition. They usually can't even recycle that shit. Like you have to match the type of plastic to the type of plastic to make it work. So uh, th this is the only way, whether you like it or not. I think I think there's a kind of religious dimension to, yes, we are all going to pay penance to for what we've done to the environment by changing our ways and changing our habits. Yeah. That's not going to work. That That's not going to work. We do not emit. We're not responsible for enough of the emissions to control it that way. Even if the entire West were to get on board with that, it wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, I think it's far more likely that over the next few centuries, the world will become uninhabitable for humans and humans will start to die off. And um, that's just a thing that happens in, in the world. You know, uh, that's not a very tragic outcome, I don't think. Um, you know, species rise and fall all the time. No species lasts forever. The world will be here. Uh, we won't be here much longer. As George George Carlin says, the planet is fine. It's the people who are fucked. But you're right in the sense that, um, and we were going to do a related story to this, which we might do, you know, in the coming days. Uh, there is a new study, and, and this is not the first study of its kind. There have been many that talk about how, like, the richest 1% of people on Earth are responsible for an insane percentage in terms of carbon yeah, footprint like, and things like that. Yeah, isn't it like, like five or billion? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like they're responsible for like the carbon output of five billion people. Five billion people, indeed, indeed. And yet they will put people through these ridiculous tasks, these ridiculous chores, just like masturbatory exercises to make them feel like they're making a difference. Oh, we're going to switch from styrofoam right. coffee cups to paper cups and plastic right. bags to reusable bags. And it's not that those things don't help. It's not that a reusable bag is not intrinsically better for the environment than a plastic bag. It's a question of, is that going to be enough to make a difference when you have, as Russell said, the top 1% of income and wealth earners in the world consume as much carbon to make up for the lower 5 billion? Like, the math just doesn't work. You know, my wife is a lactation consultant, as many of you know, and we were talking about this last night, and she says, you know, usually what they would do, what they used Not to do— Those boobs at release a lot of carbon. <laughs> well, this, this is this is one of the this is one you of those petty grievances about, that I talk boobs. about a lot. One one of the little petty psyops that I talk about a lot. They give mothers who are you know who just gave birth a sort of like plastic basin, like a little you know sink that they mm -hmm. can use in their bed. It's a plastic basin that they can clean out the breast pumps and all that stuff. You know because you have some you know plastic stuff that you, you know some uh, women use to help uh, pump. And they give you a little basin to clean it out in between sessions because you don't want any bacteria to grow, blah, blah, blah. They discontinued the plastic basins. Now they're using eco-friendly cardboard basins, which are impossible to work with because the water and soap just soaks through the cardboard and it falls apart. And it's, it's horrible. It's impossible right, to work yeah, with. Yeah, it doesn't make so sense. So it doesn't even end up offsetting carbon because they just have to line the cardboard basins with plastic bags <laughs> so that <laughs> so that the cardboard basins stay intact so not only is it not a net positive for the environment overall but even if it were like what an insult what an insulting thing to put a new mother through when you have like i right. said they're lining up private jets at davos every year you're going to put new mothers through the pain and the ass of having to wash equipment out in a cardboard basin where the water seeps through and melts onto you know <laughs> all of a sudden now your gown is soaking wet like it's ridiculous that's a religious component of all this too 
Yeah. Um, the idea that uh, we can simply make these minor innovations and one by one, as you said, you know, we will make pennants for the earth by switching from, you know, plastic to paper and styrofoam to cardboard. Look, yeah, look, no. look at me with my squishy cardboard straw. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. But I, I will say, Keaton, you're probably uh, too young to remember this. The oldsters will know what I'm saying. Yo, man, those Big Macs tasted a lot better in styrofoam containers. I remember the styrofoam containers. Do you remember the stuff? They were still things? around. They were kind of on their way out uh, when I uh, was, you know, seven or eight years old. That was like late 80s, early 90s. I remember them. I saw them. Uh, yeah. I mean, that that <laughs> that is I miss the old styrofoam containers. Um, this is something the left doesn't uh, usually touch the what i mean what we call the right which as as we've discussed is a very vague term these days they have a very good critique of the whole kind of davos liberal uh vision of the world right you will own nothing and be happy the whole uh what's his name klaus schwab Wait, what's that guy's yeah. name the creepy uh, dude his name i, I always yeah, forget klaus that schwab. guy's name yeah 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 it's klaus schwab right yeah uh, we once yeah. did a whole the, segment the, where you the, called like, him the right wrong out name of and we Austin couldn't use powers it. villain guy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know like he's from central casting you will own nothing and be happy i forget um, what name you called him once we once did a whole segment I where you I called used him the like wrong kurt schrader <laughs> kurt schrader yeah this <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> some weird name in your head i always for forget klaus that guy's schwab, name. i'm like why didn't i catch that he keeps he, using the wrong name no i mean they make a lot of hay of how the uh, rightly so um how these guys will show up with their private jets to davos how much carbon is that burning and uh, then they're going to talk about how everybody's got to start eating crickets, right? And and yeah, I mean they're able to frame it in a in a class way, but they're not wrong. They're not wrong. These people are just going to fly around in their private jets and tell you you're going to own nothing and be happy. Um, you know, with them, they don't really believe in climate change. That's where the split comes. They think it's all a conspiracy to control everybody. And whereas my left perspective is their right about it being a conspiracy to control everybody and reduce everybody's expectations in terms of quality of life and material resources while they don't really change anything for themselves. I think they're right about that, but I think they're just using climate change as a pretext to hatch their evil schemes as they will. I don't think it's because there's no climate change and it's a conspiracy. Please clap. 